Hello and welcome back to Metal Machine Shop. In this video I'm going to show you how I made my 5th scale model constant mesh 5 speed reversing gearbox. One day this might find its way into a 5th scale model car but for now it's just a project in its own right to see if I could do it. The first job was to design the gearbox using a 3D CAD program. This is an animation of the gears. It uses module 0.6 gears. These are all the gears part way through the construction. I recently uploaded a video showing how I make my gears, but here's another look. I use an aluminium mandrel in the lathe and superglue to stick the blank to it. This allows me to use up offcuts of steel which can be difficult to hold with other methods. I'm turning the blank to the right diameter, supporting it with the tailstock. Now I am preparing another blank by facing it off in the three jaw chuck. There are quite a few gears in this project, so I use the same process for most of them. With a constant mesh gearbox, the gears on the main shaft are free to rotate on the shaft until they're engaged with a dog clutch. Some of the gears have dog clutch teeth machined into them. Here I'm turning a feature onto the outer face of the gear that will later be machined further down the line to form dog clutch teeth. I bore the centre of the gear with a boring bar and I'm testing the fit on a 10mm diameter drill. This is quite a good way of testing a bore for size. Having machined the blank, I transfer the chuck, mandrel and gear blank to the milling machine to machine the gear teeth. I'm using my homemade indexing head which I showed in another video. I also made the gear cutters which you can also see being made in yet another video. The gear cutting is now complete on this particular gear and I remove the blank from the mandrel by heating it up with a blowtorch to loosen the superglue. It can then be broken off quite easily and once it's cool I can have a little play with the gears. Having machined all the gears to this point, the next job is to make the dog clutches. These are splined to the main shaft and engaged with a selector fork. I'm using my stock of offcuts to find some scrap steel that I can use. I'm using the same approach, super gluing them to the mandrel. The first job is to face the mandrel flat, then the blank is super glued onto the mandrel. The part is then machined on its face and outside diameter. The slot for the selector forks was machined using a parting off tool with plenty of cutting fluid to keep it cutting nicely. This shows how strong the superglue is. I finished the sharp edges with a chamfering tool, always one of the most satisfying jobs.
The clutches are then drilled and bored to the right internal diameter. Again, I'm testing the fit using a 10mm drill bit. The second clutch was machined from a piece of bar stock using the same general method. In this case, the part was just parted off from the bar stock. This gear has the clutch teeth machined integral with it, but I made it from two parts, with the gear part that I made earlier bonded to it using Loctite. Here's the gear being tested for size. I now use my dividing head bolted to the lathe cross slide to machine the features in the face of the dog clutches. I'm using a small milling cutter held in a collet on the lathe spindle. This is the reverse gear and it has the dog clutch teeth machined integral with it. Here's the method I sometimes use to make soft jaws for the chuck. This basically involves aluminium blocks super glued to the chuck jaws. Soft jaws are a good way of holding parts like gears by their outer edge or the gear teeth. First I face off the soft jaws. I then board a recess in the soft jaws and the gear is clamped securely and concentrically in place so the dog clutch teeth can be machined onto it. What I'm doing here is marking three equally spaced lines on the side of the chuck. This will allow me to index the chuck when I'm milling the teeth in the dog clutches on the milling machine. I'm using the chuck bolted to the machine table in the vertical position as a way to hold the work so I can mill the clutch teeth. Here I am indexing the jaws around one third of a turn. bolting the chuck back down onto the table. Having machined the clutch teeth I can test the fit on the dog clutch. You don't want it too tight and a little bit of play is ideal to allow the clutch to engage easily. Here's another one with a nice free fit on the clutch. This is the clutch that will have the gear separately bonded onto it. The next job is to make the selector forks. These are made from 2mm steel plates with a small steel block brazed onto them. I start by marking out the selector forts on the steel. I'm using normal marking out processes for this.
A bit of work with a hacksaw and file produces the outer edges. Then I'm using my super glue method to hold these fiddly little parts so that the centres can be bored out on the lathe. Having done that, the parts are tidied up and the fit is tested on one of the clutches. Here I'm using a slitting saw to make the little blocks that will be brazed to the selector forks. These are drilled and tapped, and then they're brazed on. For the brazing process, I'm using Tenacity Flux Powder, which is mixed with water to a thick, milky consistency. This little fixture I made helps hold the parts together, and the drill aligns the block with the fork. Now I'm applying a little bit of flux, and then the brazing can proceed. This is my brazing hearth made out of insulating blocks. After brazing and cooling down, the parts are immersed in a citric acid solution to get rid of the flux residue, and then they can be cleaned up with a Dremel and a rotary wire brush. This is the main shaft. I'm holding it between centres in the lathe to turn it to the correct diameter. This has to be a close running fit on the gears and the dogs. So I'm checking the diameter with a micrometer. As always I apply cutting fluid with a brush. The next job is to cut the slots for the splines in the bore of the dog clutches. I have to first set the dog clutches to run chew in the four drawer truck using a dial test indicator. I'm using my slotting tool which I've bolted to the lathe cross slide. I'm indexing the parts into four equal spacings using a detent that engages with the lathe's bull wheel. The slots align with the splines on the gear shaft and prevent the dog clutch from rotating on the shafts. I'm now making bronze bushes for the gears that run on the main shaft. This is a simple turning, drilling and boring job. The bushes are pressed into the bores of the gears using the machine vise as a press tool. The next job is to machine the slots for the splines on the main shaft. I'm using the dividing head on the milling machine table and a little cutter that I made from silver steel. I now move on to making the gear selector components out of aluminium. These are the parts that allow each individual gear to be selected. I use a slitting saw to remove most of the waste material.
The three selector components are glued together with superglue, and that allows them to be machined to exactly the same size and shape whilst being held easily together. In order to do a test assembly of the gearbox and to test all the components, I'm making a temporary rig using my 3D printer. Eventually the gearbox will have a proper metal case, but this is an interim step so I can get everything running properly. The selector bars fit into little brass bushes, so I need to machine these up quickly. All the parts of the gearbox are finally finished so a trial assembly can begin. First the dog clutch, then the gear, then a bearing and another gear. Some of the gears are held in place with circlips fitted to grooves in the shaft. The input end gear has a little ball bearing pressed into the middle of it and another ball bearing on the outside which runs in the gearbox case. The splines are glued into the slots using superglue. Not a brilliant design, but it does the job after a lot of fettling and tidying up. All the components have been slid into place and the fit tested. As I said earlier, all these gears just rotate freely on the main shaft until they're fixed to the shaft by the dog clutches. The lay shaft gears are bonded in place with Loctite retaining compound. Once the gears are slid into the correct location on the lay shaft. These gears don't rotate on the shaft, but the whole shaft complete with the gears rotates as one piece. The Loctite gives a remarkably secure bond and I've never had any problems with failures using this method. The lay shaft is now complete. The test rig is then assembled. The selector forks are fitted to the selector bars and the ends are greased and slid into position. The selector forks are fitted to the selector bars with grub screws and it took a lot of adjustment to get everything in exactly the right location and running properly. With the test rig and the gearbox components assembled, it can now be tested. First, a little bit of bicycle oil on all the bearing surfaces helps things to run smoothly. This is how the selector components work. Firstly, the gearbox is in neutral, where the output shaft doesn't rotate. First gear is selected. The lines on the screen show the path through the gearbox. Second gear. Third gear.
Fourth gear. In fourth gear, the drive just goes straight in and out with the input and output shafts rotating at the same speed. This is fifth gear, which is an overdrive where the output shaft actually rotates faster than the input shaft. Finally, the reverse. I haven't made a holder for the reverse gear idler just yet, so I'm just holding it in place with an Allen key. You can see that the output shaft is now rotating in the opposite direction. In case you're wondering, I used a drill to drive the gearbox. Now that it's all basically working, there are a few more jobs to do. The first job is to fit a detent mechanism so that the gears are held in place when they're either engaged or disengaged, and then I'll start thinking about a proper gear stick, gearbox case and other developments. Leave your ideas in the comments. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons and the notification bell and leave any comments or questions down below. See you next time.